Okay, dude, I'm Giga. Am I the most insane player on the planet or what? Why can't I heal? <laughs> I took heal so it would be easier to use. Recently, we made Hector max out his mouse sensitivity to prove you don't need mechanics to win in Platinum or below. Hector did just that, showing us all that following simple control mage fundamentals can easily make up for a lack of mechanics, and he went on to crush this game 17 and 2, even landing an easy quadra kill. Really nice job there, Hector. We're so happy you found this challenge easy. We were so happy, in fact, that this time we took away his keyboard and made him play Fizz. Yes, that's right. For today's guide, Hector is not allowed to use his keyboard as we send him to mid gold elo playing a mechanically intensive champion. The goal here is simple. We wanted to use Hector as proof that knowledge is king and mechanics are secondary. If he suffers along the way, so be it. It's a sacrifice that we're all willing to make. Oh, and as always, the rule of the challenge is that he has to do it on his first try. Anyone can complete a challenge if they keep playing. Hector had one shot only, otherwise this video never gets made. The full game with commentary is also available on our live action page over at Skillcapped, so be sure to check that out after this for the full scoop. It's probably the funniest challenge we've had him do so far. So let's jump straight into it as Hector dives into an assassin mirror, Fizz vs Echo. We're going to briefly recap the laning phase with Hector's commentary for the most part. We're focusing primarily on macro for this guide, which means that we'll mostly be looking at mid and late game decision making without mechanics. This is harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> I really can't do anything. We weren't aware how hard this was going to be when we issued the challenge. Hector literally cannot play the game. He played mostly defensively and only looked to take any action when his jungler was in the area. Okay, he's trying to flank me. I feel bad for my fiddlesticks coming in on this. He doesn't realize how useless I am. Oh, got his flash. <laughs> But yeah, they were really unsynced there, so I could just E forward. Because, like, Lee Sin wasn't positioned in a way to where I would get punished. Can I heal? Okay, got him. <laughs> Why wasn't my heal going off? Dodge? Oh my god. My mechanics are too clean. As the lane progressed, Hector wasn't aware of a very pressing issue that would arise as he tackled this challenge. Oh my god, something horrible is happening. <laughs> what pressing problem do you think he's facing at the moment? It's trash day and I forgot to take out my trash. <laughs> no. <laughs> the truck's just going by out there. Moving on, we start to see the problem with being overly passive and why we'd never recommend not playing to win lane. At some point, your opponent catches on and realizes that they can do whatever they want to you. I'm having a hard time pressing my E. I really wish I wasn't playing Fizz because of the way his abilities work. <laughs> They're just really hard to press. Besides the supposedly insane outplay we saw in the beginning of the guide, there's really nothing that he can do. His only plays have been around his jungler, and he'll begin to struggle heavily shortly. We want to make sure something is clear. He doesn't have lowly iron mechanics. He literally just cannot function his character at the most basic of levels. So we're going to be looking at things from a different perspective from now on. You will never experience a silly situation like this, but there are similar game circumstances that may cause you to take on the actions Hector took this game. Being unable to play your champion is essentially the equivalent of falling really far behind in lane. We're sure everyone here has been 05 in lane at some point in their lives. There's two different ways of playing out lanes like these. Number one is playing ridiculously safe near your own tower and letting your opponents do whatever they want on the map. This isn't necessarily wrong, but it does put the game's outcome in your teammates' hands. If they die to your laner because they have perma priority, you will be flamed, while there's nothing you could really do about it at that point. Your second option is RNG roaming. You can see the lane entirely and hope you can make something happen alongside your teammates. This is a strategy best reserved if you have no other options though and needs to be done correctly. 
I can maybe just commit to this round bottom. I don't Fiddle can just hold the wave, and I can maybe just dive bottom with Caitlyn Thresh. Seems like a good play. There's a couple conditions that you'll want to look for when going for a desperation roam like this. Number one, like he said, hopefully someone picks up the farm that you're giving up. In this case, Fiddle was walking into the area, so it's okay to just give over the farm to him. Number two, you play around the lane with the most carry potential. In this game, that's definitely Caitlyn. While Renekton can snowball, that champion typically cannot 1v5 a game. If it was a different top laner, perhaps, such as a Fiora, then yes, you may want to play around them instead. Hector got here just as Lee was looking for a gank, and with some really sloppy gameplay, he helps his bot lane clean up two kills. This is obviously a bit lucky, which is why it's a desperation roam, but it does help set the tone for the rest of the game, since he helped put his bot lane pretty far ahead. Alright, so the lane phase is finally over, which brings us to the main part of today's guide, how to correctly macro in the mid game. The following concepts you are about to learn are relevant all the way up to Challenger, even if you have iron level mechanics. Let's first hear what Hector has to say. Um, actually, I should just let Caitlyn go mid, and I'll just go clean up the side lane. Okay, so there's two here. This is really good. Like, if you're bad, and you're just holding up two people, like the enemy bot lane like this, it's really good for your team. Hector mentions that being in a side lane is great to do if you're bad, also known as being behind. Let's take a moment to add some clarity here and add the first mission that you want to follow to be a good macro player. First, let's divide the side lanes of Summoner's Rift into skill caps minion zones like we illustrate here. As Hector is on the red side, here are the collection zones, the neutral zones, and the pressure zones. Fizz is an assassin. As an assassin, you want to push waves into the pressure zone most of the time, regardless of if you're behind or not. This is because assassins are highly mobile, able to escape if danger heads towards them. They also excel at dueling, so they can often force multiple members to come and deal with them, like we just saw with both Sona and Jinx. As a control mage like Orianna, Lux, etc., you only really want to push into the neutral zone at most, regardless of how strong you are since you have limited escape tools and weaker opponents may still be able to 1v1 you as well. Not to mention, your strengths come from AoE damage and team fighting, so side lading for pressure just isn't as intuitive. There are some exceptions to the rule here. Vladimir, for example, could side lane despite not being classed as an assassin, just as easily as he could be actively joining team fights since he's great at escaping, dueling, and team fighting. We'll talk more about these zones later on. With all of that in mind, Hector's first mission as Fizz will be to pressure the side lanes. So after pushing the wave, he enters the river, but then he turns back and continues pushing bot. Why do you think that is? This brings up the second and third macro missions that you want to follow as an assassin. Watch the minimap and play around numbers. Push that, let's rotate. Our bot lane is top lane, so we really shouldn't be doing anything. What I should be doing is just pushing bottom. Now Hector knows that Sona and Jinx went mid. With his own bot lane pushing top, it's a no-brainer to continue pushing a side lane. If Hector were to continue pathing mid here, he'd find himself in a 3v5, which would be the wrong choice. It sounds obvious now that we're highlighting it, but the emotions can quickly sideline your logic in the moment. Players often fall into the trap of feeling like they need to defend an objective rather than trade them, especially mid lane turret because it's famously the important one to defend. First, losing objectives often feels worse than gaining objectives, which is why players hesitate to trade. Second, mid lane turret is the most important to defend. Do you know why that is? Mid is important because it offers protection to the squishy champions that usually occupy middle in the mid game, such as your ADC. It also protects your lane from being warded in this area by your opponent. A ward here reveals most of your team's rotations throughout the game. If you're not already, then you should be placing this ward yourself whenever possible. There was also another huge problem with the enemy's decision to group in this situation. So like what they did wasn't really that good. Getting mid tower, it just shares 100 gold with five people. Whereas Caitlyn and I were getting solo gold the whole time. So it's usually not worth it for people to do that. After basing, Hector starts to build into Nasher's tooth. He does this because he literally isn't playing with a keyboard, so he feels dealing damage with auto attacks will be the play this game. That's the type of thinking that'll earn him his next RP gift card. Anyway, he heads bot to continue with mission number one, pressure side lanes. 
Jinx is currently bot, but Hector is unable to find a pick onto her. A fight breaks out in the bot side jungle. If you were Fizz here, what would you do? The correct play here is to join the fight to accomplish mission number three, playing around numbers. With Jinx in the bot lane and the enemy so far pushed up, an assassin flanking the enemy in a 4v4 is definitely a fight that'd be in our favor. However, since Hector doesn't have a keyboard, his presence wouldn't impact the fight a whole lot and he has more guaranteed value while remaining bot lane. Let's hear what he has to say. If I was good, I could just flank this. Pushing here isn't bad either though. My team technically just shouldn't be fighting. If we're playing side lanes, like my teammates should just like be chill, but obviously I can't control them. I'm just gonna keep pushing. With both Fizz and Renekton side lane pressuring, Hector's team got into a fight regardless. This is the type of situation that makes the rules of correct decision making fuzzy. Your low elo teammates not knowing how to play properly themselves. Hector said the best play would be to flank the enemy and join the fight, but why is this the clear best choice? Well, he's decently strong with his summoners and ultimate up. The enemy is deep into their territory and he has a flank position. With decent mechanics and especially challenger mechanics, winning this 4v4 team fight will be a game winning breeze under normal circumstances. However, staying in lane is also fine because Jinx is the player who's defending. Remember, the beauty of effectively pushing into the pressure zone is that you force someone to respond. And if that someone can't solo defend, then you can continue pushing and look for a solo kill. And if they are able to defend, then you go to Rome to assist your team, typically from a flanked position, which is where you want to be anyway. Since Jinx cannot defend versus an assassin, it's up to Hector to punish. So right now, this situation would be insane because this Jinx should just be dead. Let's just, let, let's just get out of here. Mmm, not this time, Hector. Unlucky. Let's move on. Maybe he'll get her next time. Okay, so does Renekton have teleport? How do I check without pressing tab? Let's press tab. He does not. I think it would be good for me to be bot lane. Let's explain. When you're playing an assassin, your team will usually be playing towards a 1-3-1 win condition. It's normally correct to assign your top laner to bottom since they have teleport. Obviously this way they can teleport to a Baron fight across the map and potentially get a numbers advantage that way. But when their teleport is down then it's generally better to have the assassin in bot lane. Bot lane is much more isolated from the rest of the map which makes it more likely to find 1v1 situations down there. As an assassin we probably don't have to tell you why that's good for you. Not only that but assassins have much more mobility than standard bruisers. A Zed, for example, could traverse the map and join a Baron fight much faster than a Darius could. As he gets down here to push, the wave is already in the pressure zone for him. Keep in mind that your pressure zone is obviously the enemy's collection zone. This is something we very often preach at Skill Capped. With all the randomness that goes on in solo queue, finding ways to make things predictable is how you consistently climb. Both Hector and Renekton's efforts have forced Jinx to consistently come down here, since no one else on the enemy team is collecting the farm being pushed in. This is perfect, as it allows Hector to predictably and reliably miss his ultimate yet again. Despite the whiff, he's still created a numbers advantage on the map by forcing Jinx to be bottom. He collapses onto mid, where his team has already won the fight. We are in no way hiding the fact that he's being mostly carried. That being said, he's doing exactly what he should be doing when playing from behind. Being as obnoxious as possible and constantly drawing people away from your team should be your win condition when you're unable to help in other ways. Uh, these fights shouldn't even be close. I could just kill him if I wasn't worthless. Okay, at least I distracted him. Like I said, I'm just distracting. <laughs> While his team is doing Baron, he was distracting the strongest member on the enemy team. And if you looked at the minimap, Lee is likely chasing him as well at some point. Without doing anything but pushing, he helped his team secure a pretty random Baron. Okay, so there's no doubt he coin flipped some decent team fights this game, although this game was fairly close nonetheless. Having said that, we also can't deny that Hector's consistently correct macro decisions played a huge impact on the outcome of this game, even when he was playing without a keyboard. He literally was not able to function as a champion, so imagine if you made macro decisions just like Hector and even with iron level mechanics, that'd be a huge step up from having no keyboard at all. 
Remember, if you want to see the full game with Hector's commentary, then head over to Skillcapped. Also, as a member, you can learn to macro like a challenger by checking out our macro courses for mid lane. We have one course that focuses only on low elo macro mistakes. We have one for how to split push to its maximum potential. And finally, a course for how the very best pro players make the best macro decisions. But enough about that. What do we make Hector do next? Let us know below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.